this Christmas season that for you and your family you experience the joy and the peace of the newborn king, the word made flesh. When you think of Christmas, what comes to mind? Gathering with family and friends, good food, good drink. We certainly know for the children, Santa Claus comes to mind and all of the presents that he brings. And but most of us would also say that what comes to mind is the birth of Jesus Christ. Thinking of Bethlehem and that newborn baby lying in the manger and what that child actually means to the world, what happened in that little town of Bethlehem. Well, a few weeks ago, I started preparing for this homily, started praying for direction of the Spirit. And I was having dinner with my family, with my children and my grandchildren. And after dinner, I thought, I called the grands over. And you have to set this up and picture it. I had uh, my four little grandchildren come to the end, and I said, I need your help. I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want you to think about it. Now, this was a five-year-old, two six-year-olds, and a nine-year-old. So I said, okay, you're going to help Paul Paul out. My question is, and think about it, what is Christmas really all about? And one popped off. The birth of Jesus. I said, wow, good. That, that's great. They're on track. Well, now let me ask you this. Well, why was Jesus born? And it, it popped up. To save us. Ooh, that, that's a real good answer. Jesus was born, and he came to save us. Let me ask you another question. Well, why did Jesus come to save us? And what did he come to save us from? Well, it was silent. All these four faces was looking at me for just a while. And one said, from the devil. Another one said, from sin and from death. And I, wow, that's some great answers. That was some really great and some deep answers, even though very, very simple. When you think that Christmas, Jesus, the incarnation of God, God himself became man and took on flesh to come to save us. To make a way back to himself. To save us from sin and death. But Christ has conquered sin and death. So those grands really did well on, on that. And uh, some good theology in what they said in those simple answers. It made me think of that scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He, he gave. He gave of himself to you and to me. So that we may believe and not perish but have eternal life. In the faith of Jesus Christ. In some ways, see, those, those, those children were describing the incarnation. You think of the incarnation, what comes to mind. Well, the catechism defines it. The fact that the Son of God assumed human nature and became man in order to accomplish salvation in that same human nature, the Word became flesh. Now, it's hard for us to really get our mind wrapped around the fact that God, the creator of the entire world and the universe, he humbled himself and became one of us. The creator became a part of his creation, a creature. St. Paul describes the incarnation in his letter to the Philippians, a beautiful hymn, they say. Though he was in the form of God, he did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting death, death on a cross. And because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name, every knee shall bend in the heavens and on the earth and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Many of us know and another thought that had come, you know, when you think of Jesus, many of us know that contemporary Christian song, Mary, Did You Know? It's very meaningful. It contains some very speech, very deep spiritual thoughts. The significance of that newborn baby lying in the manger. And I asked you just to kind of sit back and maybe you can close your eyes and, and try to listen to the words, certainly not the, the singing, but but it, it, it's, it's beautiful. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? 
Did you know that your baby boy would make all things new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Do you know this baby boy? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came through him, and without him nothing came to be. And what came to be through him was the life. And the life was the light of the human race. The light that shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. To those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory. For no one has ever seen God, the only Son of God who is at the Father's side, has revealed him to us. The word of God, the logos, the word became flesh in the person of Jesus the Christ. He was with God from all of eternity and he is God. And out of love for you and out of love for me and out of love for all of humanity, he humbled himself, took on flesh, and he submitted himself to the frailty of the human condition. Jesus Christ is the most influential and controversial person that has ever walked the face of the earth. The reaction to him and his teachings are from one extreme to the other. Some saw him as a poor baby lying in the, in the barn, in the feed trough in Bethlehem. Some saw him as just a poor Jewish carpenter from Nazareth. For some, he was a great teacher and a preacher, a miracle worker, a prophet. A holy man of God. He was loved, praised, and worshipped. For others, especially in this time, Jesus can be just ignored. He can be just written off as irrelevant. Jesus had been hated, despised, and persecuted. And for some, hopefully for us, he is the Word made flesh. He is the Creator God. The God of all that is seen and unseen. The God of the universe. Through the Incarnation, Jesus Christ took on flesh and became man. He came to offer us redemption and reconciliation to all that are willing to accept him. Jesus, who is God, came as a promised Messiah, the Savior, the Savior of the world. He came to earn for us what we could not earn on our own, for our own self. A way back to God, a way back to eternal life, a way back to our Creator. 
Jesus came to show us the face of God. He came to show us the best way to live and the way that we were created to live. Jesus came out of love for the world, love of all humanity. He came out of love for you and me. Jesus asked his disciples, who do the people say I am? And they answered him, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then he asked them, who do you say I am? Now what a great question. And this certainly is a question that all of us will have to answer. In fact, we have probably answered that question many, many times through our life. But more importantly, the way we answer that question is not only what we say our belief is, but the way we conduct it, the way we practice our belief. In other words, our actions speak louder than words about our faith, our true faith, and answering who Jesus Christ is to you and to me personally. Does our life, does your life, reflect a vibrant, living, loving, personal relationship with the Savior, Jesus Christ? A relationship that is not only personal, something that you really buy into, that you, it's a personal relationship, it is, but it's also lived in community. It's lived in the community of the church and other fellow believers and others. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ is the incarnation, the Word made flesh. He is the light of the world, the light of the whole human race, and He is the light that has overcome the darkness. Jesus is asking you, and He's asking me. He's asking the world, who do you say that I am? May Almighty God bless you and keep you, and may the Spirit of the living God come upon you and your family this Christmas season.